<sighs> what a better day to test out the C7 or SA20 than on a snowy Canadian day like today. Oh my God, it's cold. Hello everyone, it is Matmus. We are here at the range today, finally able to take out my SA-20 civilian C7A2 rifle. Just to ensure you guys that this rifle is completely safe, as you can see inside the chamber, no rounds, no magazine, and cocking, uh, working parts of the rear completely safe. So I just want to ensure that you're uh, all comfortable with that before I go ahead. Uh, the range is completely safe right now. No one else is here actually, which is quite nice today. So I'm kind of just go over this rifle with you. Nice slow time. So as I mentioned um, in the past, if you know my channel, I'm serving in the Canadian Armed Forces as a reserve soldier, very proud to be so. And uh, I decided to get myself the C7A2 or the SA20 civilian variant to kind of set a um, precedent of just me getting into the army. And this is kind of going to be my, I guess, uh, example to myself to say that a long wait pays off. And this is my payoff. I decided to treat myself to a C7A2 uh, rifle along with a C79 uh, scope to go on top of there as the Elkin, as you can see here. I got a very good deal on this rifle, uh, absolutely beautiful gun. Uh, just to let you see the uh, inscription there, I'm going to try and cover up the serial number so you can't actually see. Uh, but the SA20, beautiful gun, guys. Uh, and today we're actually here to shoot it. Now, uh, I'm not used to the AR-15 platforms. I'm used to the bullpup design of the L85A2, being from the British Army as a veteran there. And transitioning into this rifle is going to be a little different. I'm very used to the um, behind um, the working parts thing with the magazine changes and stuff instead of the frontal ways here. So I've had an AR-15 before in the past, a PWS Mark 116 piston operated uh, AR-15. Beautiful gun, uh, but unfortunately I had to sell it. So I decided to get back into the AR-15 world. I also brought my bolt action rifle, which you can see in the background here. Uh, it's also completely clear and we'll show that off real quickly here too. Um, but today's showcase is primarily just for the uh, SA20 to kind of have a rundown of exactly, um, again, totally clear guys, just to make you aware, chamber is completely clear, nothing inside, okay, and no magazine in the bottom either, so completely clear. Uh, we will probably put a couple of rounds through this today as well, I've done a couple of videos on this in the past, if you want to see me shoot this bad boy, then feel free to go check out my other videos, uh, but as I mentioned, today is primarily focused on the C7 or the SA20. Now, um, in Canada, our magazines are limited to five rounds, and I don't have much ammunition for the fact that, well, for one, I can't really afford extra ammunition right now, and two, um, you know, it's not a big deal. I don't mind having just the five rounds. I don't need to do 30 rounds down range. It's nice that no one's here today, so I can kind of have a little bit of uh, more fun with uh, rapid fire instead of annoying someone in the range uh, position next to me. Um, but we're going to put probably uh, five rounds check zero first. Uh, the weather here is beautiful. I'm going to show you the weather, in fact, how beautiful it is here in sunny Canada. If I can just spin this around here. As you can see, we're getting a lot of snow. Um, we are up to around 300 yards on this range. We do have a steel chicken that we can shoot at. Uh, but I'm not really focused too much on trying to, um, you know, get super accurate with this thing. I really just want to put some rounds down it, uh, make sure it functions correctly. This is a pretty much brand new rifle. I've had no... Um, question about it being you know inoperable or not working correctly so i'm really looking forward to just putting some rounds down range getting a zeroed into my eyesight and get my eye relief uh, on this rifle settled in and that's about it so um let's just get round to it and start putting some rounds down range so uh, i'll meet you in a second once i've set up well i guess first things first we should probably go set up a target let's go We're in Canada, we gotta get cold and snowy. Okay, well, before we can shoot, I guess we gotta load up some magazines, or unfortunately, the only magazine I have right now, which is a USGI um, magazine, steel. I don't like the PMAG uh, system for this kind of setup because there's no requirement for it. Uh, the Canadian Armed Forces doesn't use a PMAG, so I might as well get used to what we use as a standard issue, which is a USGI or steel uh, magazine setup. So uh, everything's legit, guys. Red range safety light is on. I'm gonna put my glove on because it's very cold. 
um, to get this guy firing. What we're going to do is we're going to check fire, or sorry, check group five rounds, uh, top left hand part of the target. We'll see how I do. <laughs> it's been a while since I've shot an AR-15, or a while since I've shot in general anything, even my bolt action gun. Uh, so we've got five rounds. We're going to do five rounds at the top left uh, part of the target, five rounds at the top right, and then see how we go for the next three sets. The target has five uh, individual target points that I can check zero on. Uh, air defense is on because I don't want to go deaf today. Um, so let's just get into it. Air protection and eye protection, folks. Come on, we've got to be safe. Let's hope I don't steam up real bad here. So five rounds, we're going to do a check group of five um, and then go from there. Really nothing too fancy apart from that. So, okay. So, um, safety first, make sure the rifle is clear, complete. Okay, and magazine five rounds, load, check five, insert. Okay, so first of all, as you can see, I've got my firing position, I've got myself my rucksack because, uh, well, I'm in a prone position right now. I was going to sit on the table and shoot uh, just in the sitting position, but I actually quite like to get in the prone and practice what I would actually shoot in real life. So um, we're going to do the five rounds. I'm already starting to see my eye relief is looking quite good with the way the uh, the rear buttstock adjustable buttstock is right now. So that's good. The uh, the optic is very nice, actually very clear, uh, good quality. I'm not enjoying the uh, eye protection right now. Uh, it's kind of annoying, but uh, it's okay. We'll get by, we'll make through, not a big deal. And so five rounds are loaded now. Obviously we're going to make ready, so make ready. Let's hope that chambered one. I think I, I rode the uh, cock and handle a bit there, but we'll see. So we're going to put the weapon to safe and uh, go over, I guess, uh, my marksmanship principles. Position and hold being firm enough to support the rifle. Uh, normally I wouldn't hold the rifle like this, of course. I hold it like this. In fact, that's what I'm going to do and get used to the correct position and hold. Um, I'm making sure my sight is tight, sight alignment is correct. As of right now, I can't do any adjustments. So we're just going to kind of uh, play it by ear, put five rounds downrange and see how we do. Um, uh, what else we've got going on here? Trigger, obviously, fire, shot must be fired and followed through that undue disturbance position. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, rifle must point naturally at the target, so we're going to start doing some limbering up here, then making sure that I'm fully aligned with that target without having to adjust my aim at all. And Seems pretty good there, not too bad anyway. Get my eye relief a little better. There we go. Okay, there we go. Pretty comfy. So, first round down range on my beautiful C7A2 civilian version SA20. Here we go. Maximus, the worst shot in the world. This is where it goes click and I haven't racked it properly. <laughs> going hot. <laughs> A lot of snow fell off there. That was interesting. Okay, so first round down range, beautiful. Love the smell of cordite in the afternoon. Round two, here we go. <laughs> Snow. Round two, nice. Cycling beautifully like it should. <laughs> it's so funny, I can't even see where I'm falling shot or placement of shot because the snow coming off the roof. <laughs> oh, that's okay, we'll keep going. <laughs> and last but not least. There we go. Looking to the side, you see there are no rounds in the chamber. Empty magazine. Clear the rifle. Dry aim shot. Sights, dust cover, closed. There we go, folks. So first five rounds down range. Uh, honestly, I take these off because I can barely see through them. I need to get some professional uh, shooting goggles here or shooting uh, glasses. But uh, honestly, it seems to shoot very, very smoothly. I have no problem. Trigger's very nice. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's a standard AR-15. There's not too much to get excited about. I'm curious as to where I'm going to hit here. Uh, I'm Honestly, I'm not seeing anything on the reactive paper, so we'll see. 
Uh, I say reactive paper because it's an ongoing joke I had with someone at the range once. The paper that will allow you to see the orange marking around the black, it's, you know, the telltale paper. So uh, we're going to head down to the bottom there and see what we get. Okay, everyone, so a bit of cross-analysis. Uh, like I said, it's been a while since I've been in shooting, but at 100 yards, uh, we're seeing a bit of a grouping here. So we've got one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, I think five here. Uh, so this is what I was aiming for. Not the greatest shooting in the world, uh, but to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting to get high, tight grouping right now. I just want to make sure I'm zeroing her in. So I'm going to bring her down a little bit and see if I can get that uh, grouping a little better. Uh, but overall, you know... I... <laughs> I'm never going to announce myself as a very, very good shot, but I think it, for this kind of rifle, it takes a lot of practice to get used to it again. It's been a very long time since I fired an AR-15. I'm used to that old bolt action back there, um, shooting that uh, rifle, than I am using AR-15 platform and getting used to that kind of cyclic motion again with the AR-15. I don't really have an excuse. I'm just making excuses up for myself. Uh, but uh, we're going to aim for the dead center now and see if I can kind of zero, here, zero her in a little bit better and go from there. So let's see how we do. Okay, folks, so one thing we have to be aware of, obviously, when we're adjusting a scope is the different ways to actually adjust it. Now, I'm used to the SUSAT or Sight Unit Small Arms Trilux of the British Army, but today, obviously, and again, this uh, guys, the weapon is completely safe, no magazine, and no rounds in the chamber, completely clear. Uh, I want to go over how exactly the C79A2 scope works in terms of adjustments. Now, as you can see here, we do have the standard range drum at the back that starts as a 200 meter increment to be zeroed out. I've been zeroing it at 100, so I've done my own little adjustments to make sure that I can zero at 100. I've actually put a mark on the range drum uh, just here so that I can actually make my own reference to 100 meters uh, on my own particular range. However, this range drum ranges all the way up to 800 meters, uh, which is a really, really nice range. Of course, a little less than effective at 800 meters, this rifle. It's going to be a section support at that point. Uh, but up to three, 400 meters, very, very effective rifle for sure. We do have the adjustment uh, knob at the front here, which is going to adjust your windage or your left and your right of that post inside your sight to adjust your point of aim, which is what I've been doing just for my recent shoot, I was able to adjust my point of aim over by about six inches. Not too far, wasn't too bad. I was able to get that nice new eye relief. So um, I'm going to put five rounds through again this time. You guys can actually see me shoot uh, and relay uh, into locking in the correct uh, point of aim at 100 meters. Normally in the Canadian Armed Forces, we zero these rifles at 200 meters, but just because of my um, particular range that I'm at, I like to kind of start from 100 and work my way up to 200. And then what we're going to do, once I'm actually zeroed in on the range and on the target 100 meters, I'm just going to have some fun, uh, literally just trying some different firing positions. I'm not going to focus too much on my aim, probably try and shoot at the chicken at 200 meters, uh, and just have some fun with the rifle, because at the end of the day, I'm not here to hone in my, my accuracy right now. I just really want to get the rifle zero to me at 100 and then just kind of put some rounds down range standing prone and kneeling and just have some fun with it so if you're ever curious as to how to actually set this site up let me know in the comments section um, it's very simple there is actually a small uh, gate that you can see just here this little metallic gate here this little silver gate that gets pushed up uh, and then you can actually adjust the drum uh, in terms of sight alignment for your uh, reticle inside here up and down by one mil clicks and I think one mil is 0 0.25 centimeters at 200 meters. I'm not too sure. I'll have to check uh, the numbers again. I apologize off by the top of my head. Uh, but the, the, obviously, yes, as I said before, the uh, drum at the front here is adjusting your windage left and right. Uh, and again, I think one click is uh, 0 0.25 centimeters. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, or one inch at 200 meters, uh, I think is what it is, is one mil. Uh, but again, I'll have, to, I'll have to make sure. I've just kind of been playing it by ear with my own rifle back here, uh, using the beauty in the background here to kind of check zero and make sure that she's going in good. I can just look through my sight instead of having to go up and down the range all day. So let's put uh, five more rounds down range with this beauty okay, and see folks, what we can hit, shall put, we? put uh, five more rounds down range, see if we can get uh, at least put rounds on the correct point of aim on the target and go from there. Now, uh, I am going to take these uh, glasses off in this particular case, folks, because I literally cannot see. It's so snowy right now uh, that I can barely see a thing with the cold. Uh, so I apologize, but that's just the way I'm going to roll today. Otherwise, I will not be able to shoot. Uh, it's just near impossible. I'm not going to have any problem, I think, with this rifle having me any troubles with my eyesight. But for future reference, guys, please make sure you wear eye protection when shooting at the range. It is a number one priority. But unfortunately, I will not be able to shoot today because it's so cold. It's about minus 20 right now. I'm a true Canadian out in this weather shooting. If you could see the snow, which I'll show you shortly, it is insane. So five rounds, the target's your front. 
Let's check she's clear. She is clear. Safety, okay. Um, so, rep magazine, five rounds load, five rounds. Place in, cock to the rear, forward assist, and to safe. Okay, so limbering up again, getting that nice firing position. Get nice and low using this rock. Of course, on a normal firing range, there'd be no way in hell I'd be using a rock to aim this rifle, but I might, might as well make use of it while I'm here. Okay, going hot. Here we go. Five rounds, the target front in your own time. Go on. Breathing pattern. Making sure I'm limbered, which I'm not. Just my natural point of aim here. Take my time. Not squeezing too hard. Again, watching that grip. And now breathing cycle. Here we go. This no. Magazine, empty, clear, dry aim shot, safe, dust cover. And there we go, so five rounds. That was fun guys, I am really enjoying this shoot. Um, I'm loving this rifle. It's uh, definitely getting me into the spirit of things and getting back into the Canadian Army and I really wanna start getting refined in my shooting skills. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go check out the target, see what we hit, uh, how our grouping is. I know I got a couple of snapshots, I can already sense it just by the way I uh, shot just there. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put my tack vest on. Uh, we're gonna put a few rounds in the standing position, see how I do there, maybe a couple in the kneeling position and go from there. So uh, let's have some fun with it for now. We're not gonna focus too much on zeroing. Let's go check out the target first up. Okay, everyone, so nothing special, nothing fancy. Uh, ignore these up here. This was uh, the, the original shoot where uh, I was really trying to get my sights in. Uh, three groups of five I eventually did to get her zeroed in where I wanted her to be. We have the bottom five here um, running from left to right. I was really not focusing on my hand grip there, pulling too tight on the rifle. Eventually, I got her zeroed in where I needed her to be. Five here and five here. Um, pretty much this area here that you see these five, one, two, three, four, five, my breathing pattern is not good there at all. Uh, for these five, I was kind of just all over the place, still getting used to it. I'm not gonna lie, guys, the weather is so cold right now. Let's point it out, show you how much snow we're actually getting right now. There is a ton of snow. It is super cold here. Um, so yeah, it's not exactly helping my, uh, my shooting skills right now, but at least I'm in paper. I'm in the, sh uh, the area I wanna be, I'm zeroed. So now it's just time to have a bit of fun and put some rounds down range and not really focus too much about where I'm hitting. Uh, let's just go for it. Okay, so now it's time to actually uh, practice some standing shooting. I thought if I'm gonna do some standing shooting, I might as well put on my TAC vest, Canadian Army issue TAC vest. Uh, the TAC vest, which I will do a review on in the near future, um, is not exactly my favorite thing in the world, I won't lie to you. Uh, it's not what I'm used to. I'm used to my PLCE webbing. Uh, a little bit different design to what I'm used to. However, I thought, you know what, we might as well uh, put a magazine inside here uh, and practice putting a standard shoot on the C7 or the SA20 that we have behind us here. So I'm going to stick her on. Uh, it is a little awkward for me because uh, I'm used to having just two straps running over my back instead of this kind of zip up thing that's got going on here. But I mean, it does what it needs to do. It is a vest at the end of the day and that's what vests do. Uh, one thing I will notice straight away here being that it's so cold and I've worn extra, uh, you know, extra clothing that's a lot more <laughs> tight than it would be if I was just wearing my tunic. Uh, five round magazine here, guys, as you can see, five rounds ready to go. So uh, we do have our two top pouches here. We're gonna unclip, put my magazine in. 
And a lot of people will tell you to go up and down, whichever other way. But I like to just have it there so that when I pull it out, it's literally in and up. Everybody has their own preference of how to do that, but that's just how I roll. Um, now, I haven't actually done a C7 shoot in the Canadian Armed Forces yet. As I mentioned in the past, um, I did bypass my BMK, BMQ, so I'm kind of getting used to uh, adjusting to the C7. I've done a lot of sat range shooting, but no live firing yet, so new to the reserves. Uh, but we're going to do a standing shoot today uh, with the tack vest on. So I guess I'll just move you guys back a little more so you can see exactly what's going on here. So uh, let's put some gloves on because it is super cold and I don't want to freeze to death. I, mean, I think it's about minus 20 right now. It's not windy, thank God. But if it was, I'd be having a really bad day. Uh, so again, I'm not going to put my eye protection on guys, but please, if you do shoot, make sure and ensure you wear eye protection today. Uh, so let's pick up the rifle. First of all, let's do a clear, make sure she is completely safe. Chamber is clear, forward assist, and dry and shot. Okay, so with a magazine of five rounds, load. Pouch, which I'll try my best to open in this weather. Check five rounds in. Okay, here we go. 100, ready. Safe. Trigger control, folks. Make it sure you're always on the trigger safe. And I like to lean into the shot. A lot of people have got a little bit different of a stance now. They've got this sort of this frontal thing going on where your legs are spread wide apart. I'm not into that. I like the kind of frontal stance, my front leg pointing forwards and my back leg uh, rigid to the ground. Uh, we're just going to play with this here and uh, let's just get into it. Ready and target to your front, your own time. Go on. Unfortunately, I don't have a replacement magazine, so we're just going to go through normal safety precautions. Chamber, look apart, forward, Four assist. Five, then let's put another five rounds in the shot. Do, uh, this time, I think we're going to do the kneeling position. Um, let's get that magazine back out. We're going to kneeling position this time, folks. Um, one thing I will say, of course, ammunition is not cheap, everyone. It's uh, definitely ex more and more expensive the more you buy it nowadays. Uh, I'm trying to find more bulk ammunition to actually play with because we can get uh, Chinese ammunition over here, which is really nice because it's cheaper, you get more of it. Uh, however, it's very rare to find nowadays. So we're going to do number five. I'm going to adjust my camera here so we can go into the prone, uh, sorry, the kneeling position, and we'll do some kneeling shoot. Okay, so gloves on. It's going to have a magazine in the pouch. So, uh, yeah, um, ammunition isn't cheap, so I'm hoping in the near future I'll find some good deals on bulk ammunition, but we will see. It's hard to find nowadays, especially 223 and 308 ammo. I mean, it's the most wanted, right? So it's hard to find. Okay, so, uh, again, make sure the rifle is clear. Or assist. Try and shot. Dust cover. Rifle is clear. Okay, time to go on. So, here you go. With a magazine of five rounds load. Check five. In. There we go. Okay. 200 ready. Forward assist. Safe. Okay, so five rounds. Target to my front. My own time. Go on. Okay, here we go. We're going to look a bit more rapid this time, folks. Magazine. Unload. Okay, so uh, I think that's it for my... Uh, Prone, kneeling, and standing shoot. I think we're going to call it quits for today uh, because I am extremely cold and uh, it's just time to, to take a time out. So uh, let's put her away and I'll be back in a sec once I've done uh, 
bit of a range cleanup. So that is it for today, folks, at the range with Matimus. I really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, test out the C7 or the SA20. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to get my shooting skills honed in a little bit. As you can see, the weather is really rolling in now. Uh, some seriously heavy snow. But that's okay. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Guys, if you want to support my channel, please go check out my Patreon account. It's in the description box below. Um, hopefully we'll get the rifle out to the range again in the near future. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, leave me a like and a comment, and I will see you next time. All the best, and bye-bye. You know when it's that cold in Canada where your empty brass that you want to take home is completely solid to the floor. I can't even pick up my own brass because, oh, there we go, one seal moved off. They're like frozen. That's not mine, but that's insane that the ammunition's just, look at that, here we go. Oh my God, it's not coming off. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, Canada, how I love you.